attack, fast fatal heart impact, past painful scars, in fact I blast tasteful laws and past I back up my actions, fact don't ask, grab reactions, jacked attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap, I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise, now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce, I ain't lost, I'm finally loose, pick a new silver excuse, I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used, everybody wants a piece now, y'all can rest in peace now, you're dead to me so peace out, remember you discreet out, keep ready for defeat. All right, hello, hello, everybody. This is Kiru Show here, and now, whenever we last left off with this series, quite a lot of things were happening. In the last part, we had Deku and Amelia, and they were going to be having a ceremony that would show that they are officially married. Since they didn't, they didn't really have one when they left, they more or less just stole a ship and flew out into space. And right now. There are many reasons to why this is happening. For one reason is to show that humans and Etzos, they are on good terms. And if it is seen as the first interspecies marriage on Earth, it should be able to open up many avenues going forward for both of their people. Along with that, they do at least want the council to see that humans and Etzos, while they have been at odds in the past, they actually are doing good. Since their species are very strange ones. Humans have never encountered aliens, and Amelia species, they were given tech by aliens. However, that's it. They were just given technology, and then they just flew away. Humans, they haven't encountered aliens in over a thousand years. And even then, they didn't get any technology. That is something that they are still trying to understand. If that's the case, then why did that happen? Now, we do at least also have the council. They're trying to make up their minds on humans, and whether or not they should be their allies. They saw how much of their tech, it actually has been made, constructed, and used. And they can't deny how effective it is. Humans and Etzos, they're able to defend against the Traqua and the Dretex. And that right now is the biggest thing they're seeing. And there actually is Claire. Whenever Claire, she did learn that Deku and Amelia were going to be parents, she was very happy for them. Yes, yeah, she does have certain things that she does want to say and talk about. However, before that could even go anywhere, she was possessed by a Traqua. And right now that Traqua, it has its own plan in mind. Now then, with that being said, we do currently have about a week later. Where the council, they are still on Earth and evaluating a lot of things. They have a lot of information to go over. And right now, they're currently doing that. And we do actually have Deku. He's been answering many questions that he can. And reporting back to many different people on not only Earth, but back with the council. It's been a bit back and forth. And right now, Deku, he's talking to the Earth's government. They want to understand why the aliens, they're taking so long to get back to them. And Deku, he's trying to explain it to them. However, yeah. Many nations, they're actually getting a bit more antsy and worried. What if the aliens, they don't accept them into this council? Or this, well, space for the species? Then what do they do? And how would they do things going forward? And right now, Deku, he can't really answer that. Because the only real answer he would have would be that humanity would have to take a bullet for the universe. And that's not really something Deku wants to say. So for right now, he's keeping that tucked in his back pocket. Now, with that being said, we do currently at least have remember Deku, he would leave and head back to the mansion. Where he does have to somewhat get ready. Now, while Deku does do all that, we do actually at least have where he is getting into a fancy suit. And he does somewhat wonder about what's going on with Amelia. He knows that Edsos have certain traditions, and even the way they do things in their culture. So he does wonder what she's going to be doing for them, or, well, how the wedding's going to be structured. This is all official, and that's something that he thought would happen. 
Then again, he's learned a lot of things he didn't think would happen. I mean, hell. It's so... weird. Huh. Well... Okay. Four years ago, this type of shit wouldn't happen. Now it is. Alright, calm down. Calm down. Okay. You know how things are gonna go. Just keep your mind steady, man. Keep it cool. You're gonna ma marry her, and then you're gonna announce that Etzos and humans, the relations, are a lot better. Okay. You need to let the world know it's possible. You need to know. They need to know. Now, Deku, he's trying to keep himself uh, well under control. We do at least have Amelia. She's been getting many things prepared for this. And right now, she is getting the help from some people. And there actually is somebody there who is helping her. One of her close friends, Claire. Now, we do actually have one where Claire, she is in the room helping Amelia. And she's even talking to her about a few things. So, I, um, I heard the news. Oh, you did? Um, what news? The marriage? <laughs> no, no, no. I heard the news with you and Izuku. Oh, yes. Um, well, that is, it's very big, yeah. You are not mad? Why would I, why would I be mad? Because you were... Oh, no, 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 it's fine. I've had two years to get over him. And, well, that's not really my problem now, is it? Um, yes, no. Are you sure you're all right? Why wouldn't I be? Because the last time we talked about this, or, well, we chatted, you were giving him a bit of a glare. I was? Yeah. Are you okay? No, I'm fine. I, I know... Okay, Claire? I know humans, certain ones, tend to be jealous. So certain ones, they pretend to be okay. But if you would like to actually chat about it and talk properly about it, we can. Um, excuse me. I'm only going to turn her head, asking if somebody they can leave the room so they can chat privately. No, Amelia, I'm being serious. It's fine. You say that, but you sound annoyed. Yes, I kind of am. Listen, everything's okay. I'm happy for both of you. I mean, hell, things between me and him wouldn't even have worked. What do you mean? You, you kind of know what I mean. You and him were together whenever I was talking to you about him. Yes. And right now, you're about to marry him. So? I don't blame you. Besides, he's my friend too. I don't really know if I saw him that way or if I was just throwing some of my issues at him and... Whenever I started understanding them myself, I started liking him better. Oh, this does make sense. Does it? Okay, good. Ah, so happy I don't have to explain that to you. But still, why have you not started dating again? Dating? Yes, have you not been single since we left Earth? Huh, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just doing me right now. <laughs> that does sound ridiculous. Does it? Okay. Well, while you're changing diapers and you're doing whatever your species does, I'm assuming just like humans since you got Claire. Hey, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, it's... 
going to be difficult when you're a mom. Hmm? Excuse me? Now, both Claire and Moe go to look down, seeing the look on the person's face. Hmm? Yes, yes, um, that is a very, well, that's going to be harder to explain. But for right now, can you keep it a secret? Now, the person is just looking up at the queen, and they're just trying to think. This simply will not do. This simply will not do. They're going to stand up, talking about how they need to get some of the better materials and make the outfit more, well, make it better, and make it something that she can remember. Thank you. Now, Melita is going to turn back to Claire, expressing that this is going to be difficult, is it not? Nah, I'll be okay. Just enjoy it. Now, Amelia, she isn't just surprised. As Claire is just going to stand up, talking about how she's going to let her get back to it now. As she's going to walk out of the room, and Amelia, she does want to say something about that. Okay, were they having a heart-to-heart? -heart? Well, that's something that she never thought she'd experience. Hmm. Then again, Claire did have a lot of issues. No, she's her friend. Maybe... <sighs> Shit. Okay. Well, today is still problematic. We do have to worry about those other problems. <sighs> no, Izuku is just being precautionary. If the Traequa wanted to, they would have already sent an invasion force here. The moment they lost one agent, they should have sent thousands. But then again, those creatures. Their people were hit by some sort of disease. And that's what forced them to do what they did. Forced them to turn into lights? Okay. But still. <sighs> Today is a special day. You shouldn't just let those thoughts ruin it. I'm not even going to try and think, bring her hand up to her stomach, wondering about exactly how this will all work, and how things will change. If they get things settled with the council, then what? They go to war. She becomes one of the planets involved in it. Not only will she take the fight to them, but there's a chance they can end something that may have been going on for thousands, if not almost millions of years. Maybe since the start of everything. Even the council, they can't pinpoint when it started, or when they discovered it. All they know is some of their supply lines started getting attacked, and when they found these strange... Well, at first they thought them to be AIs in the area, they discovered much about it. There are entire systems cut off, and some even believed to be full of fighters, just sitting there, waiting for some enemy to try and pass through. The moment there's anything remotely suspicious in that area, it just goes boom. And that, it does surprise her. She At first, she didn't think it to be all that big. However, learning that this war is not only ancient, but it's going on in multiple sectors of space, it does exactly put in ideas to how big it is. And that, it just freaks her out a little bit. She understands that the universe is large. As a whole, her species knows exactly how big. And right now, it just feels like it keeps getting bigger. I mean, hell, this war could be anywhere. Even if they get it settled here, maybe it's going on in other star systems. Entirely other areas, not just the Milky Way. Okay. <sighs> Amelia, you're freaking yourself out. Calm down. Now, we do actually have over with Deku. About two or three hours later, where he's currently sitting down and answering a few questions about what's going to be happening. As there's actually a reporter who they are holding onto a holographic list and asking Deku exactly what they're doing. Them bringing their hand up and Deku looking at them. They're holding a small rectangle piece made of metal. And 
It looks like a straight bar. Deku, he does at least tell the woman she's holding her finger down on a power button. And, out from both sides and even on the paper, the metal piece is attached to it. And the woman she is continuing. Expressing that she would like to know exactly if Deku can answer some questions about aliens. Um, I can try my best. But, um, what exactly do you mean? Well, we just have certain questions. Your records or your data that you've uploaded, it's fascinated the world all around. And with the alien technology we've been given, our understanding of much technology has also been improved. Even about how natural things can be used in certain ways. Uh, yeah. That's um, a strange question, but what exactly is the second part of it? Well, um, I just have multiple questions. What do you believe to be the greatest thing that we can understand? Hmm? Um, I'm not really too sure if I'm the best that can, well, the best at answering that. But right now, there's a lot up in the air. The best thing for us to understand, that's hard to pinpoint. But if I really had to think about it through everything I've seen, even through the Traqua, I'd have to explain. There are many things out in space, many things we don't understand about our own universe, let alone our own existence. And, well, one of the questions that we can possibly answer is about this war in space. I'd have to say that there's something out there worth both these people fighting for. And it's been right in front of them this whole time. Right now, I think what we should focus on is that question. What exactly is this technology? And why is it worth thousands of years of fighting and billions, if not countless lives? Now, the person they do just start, Deku. And he does at least go to at least watch them, trying to think about that question. It does perplex them. At first, it would seem like what they already got access to this information it could be changing everything right now there are people working on exactly how to turn certain algaes and even seaweeds into conductors and other things since they've been shown that certain biological technology it just has trace amounts of plant life and using similar ones that we do have on earth they're trying to turn them into superconductors and even understand how to make them access certain frequencies. Basically, how to turn a plant into a phone or even into a computer. Now, that's the simplest way to explain it. So, right now it just does put into perspective how much information or what type of technology might that previous civilization had access to. And this is something that the person, they do just think about. It completely just freaks them out and just takes their entire amount of attention. As Deku does call on someone else. Now, the person Deku does call on, they do actually start to ask a question about the alien species that are apparently, as they do understand, humanoid. And Deku, he does this going to bring that up. He does explain to them. Yeah, so here's the thing about that. Right now, from his understanding of it and even looking into the records himself, there are about, if he's correct, only 100 or, what was it, 106, or, well, somewhere between 100 and 125, if he's correct. Explain that there are about over 100 species that are just like humans. However, they are bipedal and have two arms. That does seem to be something that he does understand. Anything else, though, it could be off. It's not going to be accurate. Or even at all the same. They evolved differently than they did. Now, the person, they do understand that. However, they do ask Deku exactly if he does believe that hybridization with these species is possible. Because from looking into the records, from what he understands, they do have hybrids of multiple species. Oh, ha. Uh, yes, that is correct. Excuse me? Um, well, um, 
for, for complete for complete clarification, let me explain and answer your question at the same time. Multiple species that are different in certain ways, they can still hybridize. From my understanding, it's a hit and miss with DNA, and even species. So there is that. And, well, there is actually proof of hybridization for humans. Now, every in the room they are just confused for a second. Some people, do, they do have a click, and others, they don't know what to say. That question sounded informative. Now, the man would then go to ask, if Deku is saying that his wife, the Etso Queen, is, ex well, is expecting to, you know, oh, she's not expecting to, she actually is pregnant currently. If I'm correct, a little over two months. Now, the person, they just drop their device. And a lot of people, they do just start freaking out and talking to each other. And Deku, he does just going to talk about how right now he does actually have to go get ready. So, he's going to at least leave somebody here to answer more questions. Once they all do seem to stop panicking or freaking out. Since, he's pretty sure that the science... It has to make sense somewhere. Along with the fact that this does actually change a theory he does know that they do have currently in existence. Which is that humans would not be able to cross a species barrier with an alien species. Now, there's something that a lot of people, they do want to talk about. And certain scientists, the moment they did hear that on live television, yeah, they immediately want to understand how and why that's possible. Now, it is actually very informative though. And we do have whenever Deku, he does go to walk away. He does go to head to his quarters and get ready. And right now, he does do that. As, we do have, while Deku's getting ready, some more time later. Whenever he does start to put something on. And there's a knock on his door, and he does just go to bring his hand up and answer it as he does go to bend down and go to tie one of his shoes. Hmm? Hello? Who is it? Hello, Izuku. I'd like to talk to you. Deku turning around. As he does see James. Hmm? Oh, um, hey, James. Deku's just going to at least tighten his shoe more before going to actually loop over. What is it? I heard your broadcast. Uh, yeah. I expected that you did. So, she's going to be a mother? Yes. Hmm. Now, James is going to smile a bit. Deku, he does see that. As he does tell James that he's going to take good care of her. Hmm? Of course. I will do my best to be of service. Be of service? Is that all you had to say? What do you mean? Well, James, you took care of her whenever she was a child, if I'm correct. Protected her. And yes, my family's been protecting hers for a long time. And? Well, it's hard to say. I do see her as a daughter, and I am very proud of her on this day. <laughs> you don't say. Yes, I do. I do have my own fears, though, and concerns. And now I myself do find it hard. What do you mean? I am getting to be a lot older than I should. I do believe that this child may be the last one my family may ever surface. Ever. I see. Well, I'm sorry about that. I find that hard to know. 
However, I did feel like I knew that information for a while. I came to that conclusion whenever Adam had his daughter. I knew that I would be protecting her. And, if need be, raise her as one of my own. However, I had ideas there. If I were to fail to protect Adam, I'd devote my life to protecting his daughter. And if the need be, training her to protect herself. However, she is with her mother. And I do not fear I will service that family. <sighs> James, listen. You don't have to service her anymore. Hmm? Yeah. Spend the rest of your time on Earth. The rest of your life. Spend it how you want. I mean, I don't want to sound rude or insulting to your devotion to life. But she is safe here. And if things do turn bad... You will be there to protect her. You aren't running away. You're not leaving her forever. I mean, hell, you said you practically raised her, right? I know she sees you a lot like a dad. Even when, well, Arthur was there, she still said that you seemed to look out for her. And you seemed to be the one who was always more worried about her safety. I understand that. However, I will be here to guard the event. <laughs> I know. Of course you will. You're my best man. Excuse me? Yeah. Um. Well, there's also... The fact that, um... <laughs> Amelia wants you to walk her down the aisle. Um. Excuse me? Um... It's tradition on Earth for the bride's father to walk her down the aisle. I don't know if your species has that, but that's how we do things. And I believe that it would only be right, since instead, there would either be her mother. And I know right now, her mom, she and I might not get along in the same room, let alone so close together. I see. Well, I would have to refuse. I'm working security, and and the safest place to protect Amelia would be up there next to me. So, um, well, I, I do see where you are coming from, and I believe that you are correct. Now, Dick would watch James. He does get a somewhat smile. And he does find that information to somewhat soothe his old heart. He lost his family. And, well, he... He'd have to raise Amelia while they were on the other planet. And even help her out in certain situations. And right now, he's happy for that. He may have lost a lot. But he can still take comfort in certain things he does still have. And he does he's somewhat not want to admit it to Deku, but he's very thankful for that. Now, with that out of the way, we do actually have whenever the entire event is set up and happening. Now, Deku, he is actually standing there, and he is looking around. Right now, he hopes that this day, it's perfect. But sadly, he does have to face a bit of a fact. Right now, this event, it's being watched everywhere. And, well, if there are Traequa on Earth, they're going to be attacking here. Since he does have a vague idea as to how they do operate. It's what he would do if he was one. So, what are they going to do this time? Poison the cake? Maybe that could be it, but that doesn't seem like something they do. Okay, let's see. This is a big event. If he was a Traqua, what would he do? Okay, uh, let's see. Hmm. Now, 
As Deku is staying there, you do actually have where he is trying to think. And he knows he's going to stare at Amelia for a second. Before going to someone smile and try and think. Now, this is actually where we do have Deku when he does going to turn and directly face front. Or face directly facing forwards towards the person who's about to start talking. And they're at least trying to explain a lot of things. And while they are currently doing that, we do have Deku. Who he is standing there and he does start to hear a weird sound. He doesn't think too much of it. However, the moment he does actually go to look up, because he was at least trying to look to his left and to his right, he did see something strange. He's staring at a wall, and then there's a faint glow. What is that? Now, Deku does go to watch it, as, after a minute or two, you do actually have where it does go away. And Deku, he does just try and write that off. Okay, maybe that was a, just a trick of the light. And, as Deku does at least ride that off, you do have where the wall does suddenly just start to burst open. And Deku and everybody, they're sent flying backwards. Now, Deku, the moment he actually is flying backwards, he does going to smash directly into something. As he does hit against one of the seats and land on somebody. Now, Deku, when everybody is going to sit back up, he actually is going to look, to, look around trying to find where Amelia went. And we do actually at least have where James, whenever he was hit by the blast, he got sent flying to his right and hit the ground. Him bringing his hand up and actually being able to catch Amelia in the air. Now, Deku when he does at least see that Amelia, she's floating, he does a look back towards the area where everything blew up. And he does his watch as something does come walking through the wall. And Deku, he's a bit horrified. He looks directly at one of the suits humans have made and designed. As right now, it's currently standing in front of the in front of everybody. As it is going to bring up its arms and start to have guns spit on it. And Deku, yeah. The moment the bullets do start to fly, he does at least try and bring up his hands to use his powers. And protect everybody. Now. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.